Hello, as you can see, today for review I've got uh, Teen hi fis Actually, I can't call this updated model. I got uh, second Teen hi fi model with uh, in-ear planar magnetic driver. It's model that they've called P2. And uh, to set the expectations right, it's not the upgraded version of P1. I'd say that it's uh, rather different models. Uh, probably in some future we will see something like P1 Plus or P1 Pro, Tin Hi-Fi like that, but uh, P2 is totally re-engineered model with different design, with different approach, different tuning, and actually double with doubled price, so their price is $340, I will add links to the Linsoul shop in the description. But uh, let's uh, try to find out uh, what they've changed and did it cost uh, that price or not. So, here is the box. Package is nice, it's much more fancier, it's, um, it looks more stylish and they worked with presentation. I really miss that old designs of Tin Hi-Fi reminding small book uh, that they used in the first versions of T2. But anyway, P1 looks stylish, nice interesting polygraphy pattern, interesting embossed uh, model's name. And uh, as usual you can remove this outer wrap and get the access to the internals. And internals opens two ways. Uh, interesting design of the box, so you can pull here, and on the upper level you will get leather case, manual, and ear pieces themselves. So let me pull them out. they are and on the lower level one will get set of tips three pair of uh, single flange silicone three pair of uh, foam tips and uh, two adapters one for pentacon and second is for single-ended connection because stock cable is using balanced connection let's pull the box with cable out Carefully, I need to I need to preserve it for photo shot and not damage it. And here is a stock cable. Here is the case. Nice looking. Uh, looks like real leather. Pretty coarse material, but build like a tank and in many situations will protect ear pieces. In terms of design they are reworked. They are made of metal but different shape of the shells used here. They used some new acoustic treatment inside of the shells. It's also changed. But uh, build quality is nice, so Tin Hi Fi proved many times that they can create uh, sophisticated uh, earphones made of metal with good uh, design, with complex shapes, with good wearing comfort. So you can see they are small, they will fit without issues into almost any ears, wearing comfort is nice unless it's not too cold outside because with, uh, when temperature is below zero at the Celsius scale, uh, wearing metal ear pieces won't be really comfortable. But uh, anyway, they have nice good spouts, so sound isolation is slightly above average. Lip for holding the tips and uh, kind of uh, protective filter also. Pressure relief hole, and that's it. Nice unusual texture on the face plates. I've read that it's actually a, not just a texture, it, it's a, a kind of cover and they are half opened. I will, I need to check that either. So tips are fitting nicely. Here they are. So let's go back 
to the cable some nice rich audiophilia looking wire interesting golden color here used two pin connectors with recessed pins it's necessary to fit it properly here they are cable itself is average in terms of softness but microphonic effect is low thanks to ear hooks it's not uh, getting hard when it's cold outside pretty comfortable cable also nicely looking this gold color used on the metal parts also carbon inserts so pretty rich cable and as you can see in terms of presentation in terms of accessory set and all other stuff everything is done nicely but uh, in it, that's probably what you can expect from this price level and of course about the sound i gave them about 60 hours of burn in i didn't get uh, much sound changes maybe during first few hours sound changed a little bit but uh, after that i didn't catch uh, big uh, changes in sound representation so probably not much sense in burning them in for extended time just find some good tips that will provide a good isolation for you also i tried to experiment and uh, to get uh, uh, to understand is it uh, open back uh, design or not i think that it's not because they're not leaking much sound outside and they're not leaking much sound inside maybe they are semi open because uh, there could be some uh, air pressure relief uh, holes but i'm not sure about that so uh, not uh, sure how to check it i also tried to close them by finger but uh, didn't get big sound changes uh, just a little bit and maybe it's because i just pushed them deeper into ears so if uh, someone knows for sure just write a comment i will pin it uh, to understand better and uh, in also you need to keep in mind that it's uh, pretty hard to drive model sensitivity is 90 decibels and uh, impedance is 32 ohms that meaning that uh, source will need to deliver a pretty good amount of power so here is the player i will use to show the examples and even from balanced output of uh, sp2000 i need to rise volume uh, up to 90 at their scale from 0 to 150 and it's pretty loud usually many in-ear monitors became uh, too uh, too loud to listen for me but uh, this one requires some nice power anyway and in terms of sound uh, they have some similarities with uh, p1 but it's definitely retuned model offering uh, really different experience and uh, i will be a bit subjective in this review but uh, that's the way i'd like to do it uh, you know i appreciate p1 i appreciate their fast and detailed sound but at the same time i was not a fan of p1 uh, tuning because it was a bit too harsh and a bit too uh, uh, too lightweight for me because i wanted more low frequencies and uh, planar driver used in p1 was uh, a bit bass light and the uh, notes were lacking a bit of foundation a bit of weight but it was uh, really fast and focused on the micro contrast and in this in-ear monitor they actually fixed that they retuned it more to common uh, liking more they retuned it uh, to sound more common with uh, more weight with more low frequencies and a bit more weight on the mids and with a bit less focus on the micro contrast and i think it's a really good change in sound because it's sounding much more natural you know in my opinion pure resolution only me doesn't give you the best sound because sound is a matter of balance of different aspects and weight and uh, presence is a really important aspect in, in the sound and 
when instruments are lacking body, when vocals are lacking definition, no matter what resolution is, because you need you need weight. And this model delivers that, and it's uh, really balancing that well. Anyway, let's uh, talk about them probably in step-by-step -step description. So, low frequencies are more present uh, comparing with P1, but actually in terms of general representation they are on the normal level. They have a slight accent, but it's just the normal required accent uh, at my scale of uh, base accents. Uh, lows are really technical, they have good depths, sub bass is not dominating, but bass is uh, pretty linear, going on the good depths, and uh, mid bass is not dominating over uh, over the um, low, lowest levels of bass, so bass is pretty natural, really well balanced, and uh, shows a good rumble and impact. It's not probably a bass head model, but uh, even with electronic music they show good amount of resonance, good amount of mid and weight. But uh, more, more important aspect for me is that uh, they provide good amount of details, nice texturing and good resolution, lot of small nuances and overtones sounding really natural with acoustic instruments, with uh, double bass, with low notes of fortepiano, really good with organ and actually, you know, it's kind of mix of uh, good properties of balanced armatures and dynamic drivers. You know probably that with dynamic drivers we're getting more body and more weight and with balanced armatures we're getting more resolution. This one is somewhere in between. It's faster than typical dynamic drivers, it's more weighty than typical balanced armatures, so really good balanced representation of low frequencies. And as an example I've got uh, private investigations uh, and uh, Dire Straits, Mark Knopfler, really good track, I like it, uh, I like it from the start, uh, but uh, the most interesting part in terms of low frequencies starts somewhere in the middle, when uh, first part of tune is over and starts this part with monotone bass note, repeating over and over, and this uh, in-air monitors uh, deliver that uh, bass note really in a really impressive and really nice juicy way as well as drum kicks and all that stuff that requires good low frequencies. Mids uh, is another fairly good, is another well balanced part here, not fairly, just well balanced. And they are in between of pure resolution and uh, normal weight and other stuff. So probably it's a bad news for P1 lovers because that focus on the mi micro contrast is a bit smaller here. They are still uh, pretty resolving with a good uh, amount of micro details, but they are not as highlighted as in P1 and they are not... Uh, as uh, focused on the dry and monitoring representation. So more weight here and that means more natural representation of instruments, uh, more natural representation of vocal, um, more emotional representation, better macro dynamics and with some fast transitions it's uh, of, uh, sounding better. Also, uh, it's a bit more forgiving for the quality of records, but still it requires uh, uh, it requires properly recorded and properly mastered things because it's still a planar magnetic driver and it's still the mm, plan uh, still uh, not uh, highlighting everything too much. So it's uh, uh, what is present in record it will play but less uh, nitpicking comparing with P1. Imaginary stage is noticeably above average, not hu super huge, but above average and with a really good uh, uh, instrument separation, with good depth layering, sounding uh, nice and pretty engaging also, with all that 3D stuff is, uh, uh, is uh, represented well here. And as an example for the mid frequencies, I've got the track that I like, I really like that two albums that Hugh Laurie created, uh, they are really charming, they are full of uh, uh, 
uh, luxury sense. They are full of that uh, interesting ideas, nice reinterpretations of classical tracks. And Wild Honey, of course, it's good vocal, nice instrumental part, and these uh, earphones play this nicely and with really good amount of details and small nuances. And treble. Treble is the uh, most controversial part here because it's uh, highlighted uh, actually and they have noticeable spike on the upper treble somewhere at the 8 plus kilohertz area. From one hand it's adding more treble extension, it makes the treble more clean, uh, a bit more sharp, uh, more effect efficient or no, no, not efficient, no, um, effective, effect, more effective, but uh, if you're sensitive to the treble, it could be a deal breaker for you, and uh, it's also sometimes in very rare cases sounding be not uh, really natural. But besides that, uh, it's really good treble, fairly well executed, with nice balance of uh, uh, resolution and uh, with good attacks and decays, uh, really natural sounding, and that means uh, nice layering, good overtone saturation, and extended treble also means a lot of that nuances that are often lost by models with less treble extension. And uh, that uh, extension also means more nuances of the room where it was recorded, but also it requires uh, uh, well recorded tracks because otherwise you will get uh, the, all that uh, artifacts of compression and other stuff that sometimes is present on the upper in the upper treble area and uh, as an example i've got king crimson moon child so really complex uh, tune with a lot of instruments with a lot of sm small bells and a uh, lot of airy guitars and other stuff and uh, that requires nice good layered well well layered treble and uh, these uh, earphones delivers it nicely so to summarize everything it's uh, fairly well balanced model uh, with good resolution but also with proper balance of weight uh, with nice low frequencies and slight spike on the upper treble so keep in mind that it's not p1 improvement it's just a different tuning and in terms of pairing i already said that it requires some uh, nice source with decent power and probably the range of players is between uh, fio m11 and up to ibasso dx220 but uh, in my opinion it's better to pair them with uh, some warmer uh, sources for example with hybe r6 it's sounding really nicely and engaging also with shanling dubs for example also sounding nice with Kane N6 Mark II and N3 Pro in the tube mode also interesting pairing uh, with, for this uh, ear, uh, earphones. And speaking about the compressions, uh, you know, not much models I can recall in this price range and uh, this model is slightly different, so just few reference points like uh, uh, Duno DK3001, oh sorry, 2001, 3001 more expensive and more focused on the micro contrast. And uh, DK2001 are more emotional, more fun in terms of sound, more highlighting music with additional emotions. Uh, I don't know, some IMR models like EDP, EDP has less uh, treble extension, this one is more extended in treble and also brighter. And also they have difference in the low frequencies, this one is planar and it's a bit faster and EDP offers more tight low frequencies. And other models like, uh, for example, RA, RA has uh, planars on the mids, but uh, they work just on mid frequencies and offering a bit more resolution and also uh, vast majority of IMR models have uh, piezo treble with um, less uh, spike on the uh, upper treble and with uh, uh, with uh, more even treble representation sounding a bit more natural. 
I don't know why, but sometimes I am uh, I am uh, asked to, to compare them with Shure Tape Pro, but they really have not much in common. This one is uh, more resolving, more natural, more engaging sounding, but price is two times higher, you know. When P1 was released, Shure Tape was a competitor, they were pretty in the same price range and they could be compared, they offer some similar similarities in sound, but uh, comparing with uh, P2 it's just a step higher. And going back to the question in the beginning of this video, does they worth the price uh, change comparing with P1? So for me yes, but keep in mind that if, if you own P1 and if you want to upgrade it and probably P2 is not uh, like a safe choice, you need to listen to them before buying because they offer more mature and uh, better balanced sound. But at the same time it's uh, different comparing with P1, so it's just another approach uh, to the tuning uh, on the, another level, so it's, for me it's uh, just another model. So thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and have a nice day.